Hello guys and welcome to this rather different video that I prepared for today. I really haven't made one of those more generic videos in quite a while so today I'm going to present to you 12 different tips about Black Desert that any player should be aware of. So to get this video started right away, the first tip that I want to talk about is about the weapon and armor branding. And for those of you who don't know what branding is, basically it allows your weapon to break slower and it costs less money when you want to repair it. And for some classes like for example rangers, it is very important to have a branded weapon because rangers usually grind less than one hour before their weapon breaks and if you want to be able to grind one hour or more then you would have to use branded weapons. My advice and the first tip is that if you are one of those players that is sniping his weapons from the marketplace then you should pay attention to the weapons description because some weapons like uh, Libertos or Xarkas could have that branding effect on them already. So if you scroll down on the list and you look at all the different weapons instead of just buying the cheapest one, you might be lucky and find one of those branded weapons and get more value out of that weapon that you're going to snipe. The second tip on my list is about storage. Did you ever wonder how you can get basically unlimited storage without having to use your precious contribution points to buy those storage buildings? Well, the easiest way to get more storage is to use wagons because you can store anything on a wagon that is not character bound. So basically anything besides all those things that say character bound on them can easily be stored on a wagon instead of using the bank to do that. And I personally just store anything that is not produced by my own workers on wagons. The main reason why I say this is unlimited storage is because if you want you can just remote collect that wagon and it will just take it into the stable even if you don't have that many spaces. So you could basically have 10 wagons and only 3 spaces on that stable and you can still stack all those 10 wagons inside the stable. This is probably the most efficient way to store your items because you can use that extra contribution points that you would spend on storage to get more workers or more nodes or just something else. And you can buy as many wagons as you want and name them differently to not mistake them from one another. For example you can name a wagon for scrolls and just store on that one your relics and pilafest scrolls and so on. Next up I'm going to be talking about beer and more precisely about how much energy beer actually recovers because you might be under the impression that beer recovers two energy for your workers or two stamina. So let's take for example a professional goblin. If he has a maximum of 10 stamina you're going to expect him to work 10 times if you're going to feed him right after you go to sleep or you go afk somewhere else. But beer only recovers two energy and nothing less. So for example if this professional goblin is at 7 out of 10 and you're going to feed him then he's only going to go up to 9 out of 10 and he's only going to work 9 cycles instead of 10. This gets even worse if you're going to be using cool draft beer because that one recovers 3 energy and nothing else. So if you have a worker with 8 energy out of 10 then if you use cool draft beer you're not going to recover anything. So just keep in mind when you're going to sleep or just afk in general that if you have goblins that have 10 stamina in total then chances are they are only going to be working 9 times if you feed them with normal beer. Next up on number 4 I want to talk about that marketplace uh, sell button on the bank because I personally when I started Black Desert didn't even notice this button even existed on the first one or two months. So if you want to sell stuff directly from your bank you don't have to take them out and run to your marketplace like I personally used to do in the beginning. You can just register them from the bank and the only downside on this 
is that it will just automatically suggest to you the average price of that item. So you would have to exit and look at the marketplace yourself if you want to make sure about that price. So it would take a little bit longer to just check the price to make sure it is correct. But if you want to sell large amounts of timber for example, it is easier to sell it directly from the bank instead of running to the marketplace. It's not really that big of a tip but it's still something that I want to mention. Next up on number 5 we have the horse weight limit and this is something that most players already know but there may be some newer players who don't know that there is a certain threshold on each horse over which it won't let you put any more on it. But for example if you are below that threshold you can just put in one go as much as you want. So for example this is very useful if you want to go somewhere to grind and you don't want to take a wagon with you because you can use any two items that are below that threshold. So for example for me it is something that is below 275 and the third item will just be one of the trash loots that is in very high amounts and it does weight quite a lot and I just stack that over and over on the third slot on my horse and this allows me to grind for a few hours before I finally decide to leave the spot and just go somewhere else or prepare or just leave entirely. So basically by using this method you can extend your grinding times by quite a bit because you're not going to have to go to a city to sell your trash items that often. Also this exact same method is used by people who want to stack as many crates as possible on one horse. So if you want to know the limit of those crates then you can easily stack on a horse 7150 crates. That is the limit you can put on one horse. Next up at number 6 we have the actual health experience that you can get from the food buffs. So back when I was a newer player people used to tell me that I need to eat the red food buffs to get more experience for the health bar and level up my HP faster. But it turns out that if I test the Balenos and Serendia foods the yellow and red ones give the exact same experience. At least this is at level 1. You can test this at different levels if you want but for now I'm going to say that there is no difference in actual health experience between the red and the yellow food buffs. This also may have been something that was changed from back when I was lower level but for now I want to say that if you want to level up your health and just have buffs in general just buy the yellow ones and not bother with the red ones. You can go for the red buffs only if you want to prepare for a node war and you want to stack as many food buffs as possible. But unless you're going to do node wars then just stick with yellow buffs. Next up for number 7 I was already asked quite a bit of times how I change my font in black desert. So I'm going to show you guys how you can change your font in black desert to any other font that you want to use. But I would uh, suggest you use some form of Chinese or Korean font because those seem to look the best. So what you have to do is to first off go to the directory where you installed black desert. In my case that is program files 86 because that's where it is installed by default. So you go into that uh, black desert directory and you make another folder named pre-string table and inside that one you make another folder named font and in the font folder you put your actual font. The only thing is that you will have to rename that font to Perl. So you pick whatever font you want, you rename it to Perl and you put it inside this folder and then you restart the whole game and your font should be changed. And you can redo this process over and over until you find the font that you actually like and want to use. I don't know about the other methods used to change your font but this one is the only one that I know is actually legal because it doesn't change any of the original Black Desert files. 
Next up, I want to talk about the server change timer, because as you know very well by now, if you want to change servers in Black Desert, you have to wait a cooldown of 15 minutes. But what you may not know already is that the game always knows on what server you are the last time. So for example, let's say that you are on Balenos 5 and you want to go to sleep. Well, you're going to log out of uh, the game on Balenos 5 and 8 hours later when you wake up, you want to relog back into the game and when you come into the game, there is already a world boss spawned, but you relogged into the game on a different server, like for example Media 5. Well, the game kept in its data that 8 hours ago you were not on Media 5, so you got a 15 minutes timer to wait. And if the world boss is already dead on the channel you are are on then you are out of luck because the game will just put you on that 15 minutes timer. So my advice is to try to remember or make a habit of remembering on what channel you were the last time when you were online. So for example I myself try to always log out on Valencia 3 because that's my home channel for my guild. So I always try to log out on Valencia 3 so I can re -log back into the game on the same channel. Next up on our list, we have the FPS issues. So you probably know by now that Black Desert is pretty well known for its poor optimization. Well, if you are out in the field and you seem to have 60 FPS, yet your game is still stuttering, then there is a pretty easy fix for that. All you have to do is to press escape and open your marketplace and then close it right back up and that should fix the stuttering issues. I tried to replicate that on the screen but it didn't really turn out that well because I still had my normal 60 FPS even before I opened the marketplace. Still, if you seem to have that stuttering issue, just try to open your marketplace and then close it right back up. This may get fixed in the future and I actually hope it gets fixed but for now it is something that is still working. And another way to fix some of the performance issues is to just restart the entire Black Desert client. Because if you look on your task manager, sometimes if you travel too much, you are going to have a lot of RAM consumption on the Black Desert client. And that's mainly because Black Desert, as I heard, doesn't really take out of the memory all of the buildings it loads. So if you are going to travel around Heidel and then Calfion and then go through Valencia and then end up grinding in Valencia, Valencia, you might have a client that is using 6 GB of RAM or more. Anyway, moving on, let's talk a bit about knowledge. So more precisely, I want to talk about the daily and weekly boss scrolls. Because as you know, you can get one daily scroll or one awakened piece every day and same for the weekly. You can pick one of those every week. And what you may not know if you are a newer player is that you can just basically instantly complete those quests without having to kill any monsters for them. How this works is you basically need to first have the knowledge for that boss before you can complete the quest instantly. So for example, if you have the knowledge for Beg, then if you are going to pick the Beg daily quest, then you will no longer need to kill monsters to complete that quest. It will just automatically complete itself. And the same goes for the weekly bosses. For example, if you have the knowledge on Dim 3, then you don't have to kill the monsters anymore to get that uh, weekly piece for the Dim Tree Spirit scroll. This brings me to the tip number 10 for this video, which is that there is an NPC in Calfion that can sell you knowledge for the Muscan boss. So if you are a newer player and you don't have knowledge for any of the world bosses, I mean for the weekly bosses yet, then you can just buy this one for 8 millions if you want to spend that much and you're not going to have to do the weekly monster killings anymore, at least not if you pick the Muscan boss. And same for other bosses. This uh, NPC has knowledge for other things but I don't know what those are. Besides giant monster and muskan, I don't know what the other knowledges do. But instead if you want to reset your knowledge then this is still the NPC you are going to have to come to. Because this is the only NPC that I know of that can reset the knowledge on basically anything. So it doesn't really apply to only bosses. You can reset the knowledge on mobs as well or basically anything in the game. Moving on to number 11, this one is about cooking. 
I did say before in other videos that the fastest way at the moment to get contribution points is to spam cooking, and I personally only cook when I want to make beer for my workers. So to make beer you need to use 5 of one type of cereal. So you need to first send workers to collect cereals, and then when you want to do cooking, you need to use 5 each time you want to make beer once. So you're using them 5 by 5, but if you want to cook even more, then you can just make vinegar instead. Comparing it to beer, vinegar only uses one cereal and one type of fruit, which in this case will be strawberries. So you can just cook 5 times more if you're going to come here to this Milano NPC and buy strawberries for 700 gold each. So basically instead of using 5 corn for example to make one time beer, you can use one corn and one strawberry to cook 5 times the vinegar that you would cook as beer beer, so in return you should get more contribution points. But the downside is that you have to buy these strawberries, so you're going to have to invest some money. And I'm not exactly sure what the profit is once you sell that vinegar on the marketplace. But still, if you want to get as much contribution points as possible, then this is probably the best way to do it. And now for the last point on my list, the number 12, this one is something that might come in handy if you go out and grind and your lantern just expired. Basically you can go into settings and under the screen tab, if you scroll down you will see a slider called adjust gamma. And if you slide that one all the way up to 50, it will become much easier to see in the darkness. So if you are out doing a boss or just grinding and your lantern expired, just know that that you can go into settings and get that one all the way up and you will start to see much better in the darkness. And when it gets back to daytime you can just take that one back to normal. It's really nothing that special but some people, especially newer players, might not be aware that this is actually an option. Now with this I'm finally done, so I hope at least one of the tips on this list was something that you didn't already know. And if you already knew all of these, then I'm sorry for wasting your time. Now if you enjoyed this video then maybe consider to leave a like or maybe subscribe if you haven't already, because it helps out the channel and it helps me feel just a little bit better about myself. And if you have any questions or maybe want to point out some details that I missed, then just leave a comment below because other people might benefit from the extra information and I personally always read the comments so there's still that. Thanks for watching the video and I will see you guys next time.